dinosaur dig. Okay, it's going to be very important to our studies. It's written by Esther Ripley. Lost and found. Josh climbed out of the SUV and gazed across the sand and rocks. Somewhere in this desert, he was hoping to find a treasure trove of dinosaur fossils. In the early 1900s, a fossil hunter had found the bones of, a huge, di of huge dinosaurs in part of the Sahara Desert in Egypt. Although this fossil hunter died many years ago, Josh had the map references for one of the dinosaur sites. This is Josh traveling through the Sahara Desert in his SUV. They were recorded in his global positioning system or GPS, a handy little computer that uses satellites to help people navigate. The GPS beeped repeatedly. It was telling Josh that he had reached the right spot. But Josh was puzzled. This doesn't look like it at all, he said to his partner, Jen, who was driving. There's supposed to be a mountain here. Dinosaur fossils. Over millions of years, dinosaur bones buried under layers of rock turn into solid stone forming fossils. When Josh was six years old and growing up in Orange, Massachusetts, he was given his first book about dinosaurs. His favorite dinosaur was Spinosaurus, a carnivore with a huge fin on its back that stood up like a sail. The fossilized bones of Spinosaurus were discovered in the Bahiria oasis in the Sahara Desert by a German fossil hunter named Ernst Stromer. Traveling by camel, Stromer made a trip into the desert to dig out the fossilized bones and take them back to Germany. Ernst Stromer also unearthed sharp, jagged teeth belonging to another huge meat eater, which he called Car Carodontosaurus. There were also giant solid bones from a heavyweight sauropod, a plant-eating dinosaur with a long neck and legs like tree trunks. He called it Egyptosaurus, which means Egyptian lizard. This is Ernst Stromer. This is one of the bones he uncovered. And this is the skull and teeth of the Carcharodontosaurus. After years of preparation, an incomplete 50-foot-long skeleton of Spinosaurus was put on display in a museum in Munich. But in 1944, during an air raid on Munich in World War II, a bomb fell on the museum. The building and Stromer's precious dinosaur bones were destroyed. The skeleton of Spinosaurus, which means thorn lizard. Studying a dinosaur bone. Josh's fascination with dinosaurs continued as he grew up. He went to the University of Pennsylvania to study paleontology, which is the science of studying life on Earth as it was millions of years ago. For this final degree, Josh had to complete a big project and choose a site for a dig. Josh knew exactly where he wanted to go. He wanted to follow Stromer's footsteps into the Bahira Oasis in the Sahara and find more examples of the dinosaur bones that were destroyed in the air raid during the war. If he was really lucky, he might even find a new... Dinosaur. Removing a dinosaur bone from rock at the University of Pennsylvania. So this is them practicing. Okay. Rocky badlands of North America, plain and grasslands in South America. For 180 million years, dinosaurs roamed every part of the Earth. Fossil hunters find their bones on every continent 
on the plains and grasslands in South America, in the rocky badlands of North America, in quarries in Europe, in the desert of Asia, in Australia, and even in the frozen Antarctic. This is the desert of Asia right here. But for many years, no one had returned to where Stromer had excavated in Africa. This was where Josh and his partner Jen traveled to find out there were n more dinosaur remains. Antarctica. New dinosaurs. At least seven types of dinosaurs are discovered every year, revealing more and more about life when dinosaurs ruled the world. Checking the map for references. Josh and Jen used Stromer's notes about his expeditions to search for his dinosaur site. But Josh decided that the map reference recorded in his GPS must be wrong. The site was supposed to be at the base of a distinctive cone-shaped mountain called Giebel el Dist, but this was nowhere in sight. Back in the SUV, Jen drove east with Josh leaning out the window, scanning the horizon for Giebel el Dist. Suddenly, he saw something. It looked like a log lying in the sand. Can you pull it up there, Jen? Here, Jen? I need to take a look. Carefully brushing away the sand, Josh uncovered a thick bone about a foot long, broken in three places. He could hardly believe his luck. From its size and shape, Josh guessed it belonged to a large plant eater, perhaps an, you guys remember? Egyptosaurus, brushing away the sand. Part of the bone was uncovered. The discovery of one bone was not big enough to find uh, enough was not a big enough find to launch a fossil hunting expedition. But later that day, Josh and Jen were lucky again. Driving back across the desert, they find Gebel el Dis. The area was littered with pieces of fossilized bone. Josh was very excited. If he could bring a team to Egypt, who knows what they might find. Cone-shaped mountain called Gebel el Dis. Back home, Josh paired up with a paleontologist friend, Matt Lamana to raise $60,000 they needed for an expedition. They had a good story to tell about Stromer, the dinosaur bones destroyed in the war, and Josh's fi finds in the desert. A film company decided to sponsor the trip and make a film about it called The Lost Dinosaurs of Egypt. Josh Smith and Matt Lamana find sponsors. The Expedition. Almost a year later, a dig team of paleontologists and field workers and a film crew rolled into Bawidi, a small mining village in the Bahira Oasis. Josh, Jen, and Matt were also joined by Jason, nicknamed Chewy, because he reminded everyone of Chewbacca from the movie Star Wars. Chewy was an expert in preserving fossils. Fossil hunters usually work in remote places with few comforts, so the team members were surprised and pleased to discover that their lodgings had hot showers and flushable toilets. We're used to mud huts with a dirt floor and a pit for a toilet, said a delighted Jen. Ugh. It's good that they had flushing toilets, huh? Imagine life without a flushing toilet. The team starts digging at Stromer's old bone pits. The team had only six weeks to find fossilized bones of dinosaurs. Most people think of deserts as hot places, but in winter it can get very cold. Digging hard kept the team warm during the day, but as soon as the sun went down, it was freezing. After two weeks of digging, they had little success. There were plenty of small pieces of fossils on the surface of the sand, but when they dug down, there was nothing underneath. Everyone was disappointed. Small pieces of fossils. So were they successful there? No, they didn't find anything. Taking a break from excavating a shallow pit, Shuey studied the horizon. A sandstorm's coming, he shouted. Within half an hour, a biting wind swept in, sending stinging sand into the diggers' eyes, noses, and mouths. 
Josh lay flat on his stomach with his bandana tied over his face, trying to brush away the sand from what might be a bone embedded in some rock. This is pretty stupid, he said. I'm uncovering something, and 30 seconds later, it's covered up again? But it's only a small scrap of bone anyway. Josh was worried that the bones might have crumbled away to dust. Maybe this is all there is, he wondered. Perhaps Stromer discovered everything, and there is nothing left for us to, to find. Protective gear. It's important to wear the proper clothing on a dig. Gloves protect hands from jagged rocks, and goggles help help eyes free of stinging sand. I don't think we have goggles on our tool list, but you can include that in your narratives, okay? You can talk about putting on your goggles. Deeply buried dinosaur skeletons are brought closer to the Earth's su surface when earthquakes disturb the rock layers. A whole dinosaur skeleton before it becomes buried deep in the earth is right here. You see it? See it on the top? Minerals and water in the rock turn the bones to stone over time. Movement in the earth gradually pushes the skeleton towards the surface. Fossil hunters find the remains in canyons and cliffs where many layers of rocks are exposed or on the ground shifted by landslides. Then they use hammers, pickaxes, and drills to get them, to get to them. Often the weather does the hard work and the bones end up close to the surface. In the desert, wind and sandstorms wear away the layers of rock. But if no one finds the bones, they crumble away to dust. Fossil hunters discover the bones. So this is what we're talking about with the steps of fossilization, right, guys, in that poster? Remember that? Yeah. The big bone. Josh began to think about the broken bone he had found with Jen on the first trip early, a year earlier. It was right on the surface and was probably not much, un and there was probably not much underneath it. But why not take a team back to look? Throwing their tools in the SUV, the fossil hunters together with the film crew headed off to the new film site. To the new site, sorry, not film site. Um, team working at the new site. Dinosaur fossils uncovered. The bone was lying just as Josh had left it. Not far away from the, not far away, the team could see more bones. Grabbing shovels and hammers, the workers began to pick away at the soft rock beneath the sand. Almost immediately, they found what they had been searching for. Glimpses of large bones embedded in the rock. They had struck dinosaur gold. The bone quarry buzzed with excitement. Josh was chipping along the edge of a large bone using a dental pick and brushes. A few feet away, Chewy was chiseling out something just as big. Then they realized they were working on two sides of the same bone. This is the top end of a humerus, Chewy cried, identifying the curved upper arm bone. See Chewy right there? You guys see him? And these are the tools he's using. He's using a, br a paintbrush, a dental pick, and a toothbrush. Okay, and these are the dinosaur's humerus bones. It's huge. This is compared to a human. Okay, the dinosaur's humerus bones, the height of a human. A human's humerus bone is right here. Touch your humerus. Humerus radius, humerus radius. Remember the, the song? Yeah. Bones, 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 bones. Okay, we'll, we'll do that. We'll do that after the book because you guys are doing awesome. Okay, <laughs> can't be, jo laughed Josh. If this is the top, the other end will be way down there. Nothing's got a humerus that big. But after a day of hard digging, Josh and Chewy presented the biggest humerus they had ever seen. It was five feet, seven inches long, as tall as a man. A man a little shorter than Mr. Possible. Uh, the humerus belonged to a seropod, a long-necked plant-eating dinosaur that roamed in the Cretaceous period. The size of its bones told Josh that the seropod had found what that the seropod he had found was very big. It normally takes months to dig up the bones of such a large dinosaur, 
But the team had just three weeks left. So this is the, the huge seropod. And this is the Egyptosaurus. Dinosaur times. The earliest dinosaurs lived 230 million years ago. The last ones died out at the end of the Cretaceous period, about 65 million years ago. So these are the periods right here. Triassic period, Jurassic period, and Cretaceous period. 230 million years, 208 million years, and 65 million years. Is that, that's the, the, the last dinosaur was gone then. That's a long time ago. The diggers hacked out a large block of sandstone containing fossil, a fossil by digging a trench around it, leaving a pedestal of earth, a pedestal of earth underneath. Then the, they painted the bone with a special glue to prevent it from crumbling and covered it with aluminum foil for protection, putting on the plaster of Paris, just like wrapping a broken arm in a cast. Next, they put a jacket of bandages and plaster of Paris to protect the bone while they freed it from its pedestal. They dragged it slowly out of the pit. Chewy drew diagrams to show exactly where the bones were lying to help them fit the bones together later. See, the, see this diagram right here? Everybody, everybody look up here. Everybody look up here. This is what Chewy drew so that they knew where the bones were located. Okay, the sketch shows the position where the bones were discovered. Almost done, guys. You guys are doing great. Okay. The team also found patterns of ripples and waves on what was once deep mud, as well as fossils of ferns and roots. This meant their seropod was not standing on dry sand. It was walking in a seaside swamp full of lush plant life. These are mud rocks showing ripples. You guys want to see the ripples? Yeah. These are mud rocks. Okay. And those are the ripple patterns right there. Okay. Shifting earth. The surface of earth shifts constantly. During the age of the dinosaurs, continents collided and broke apart, and oceans came and went. Matt found, Matt found another site littered with fossils of fish, turtles, crocodiles, and other creatures that lived in this tidal mudflat. This was more evidence that the dusty desert may have been very, a very different place 100 million years ago. Fossilized skull of skull bone of a giant koala camp fish. And this is a leaf fossil. We could look at that one. Leaf fossil. Okay. As the days sped by, the pile of rocks and fossilized bones grew. The field of workers had shifted five and a half tons. In their plaster jackets, some of the fossils weighed as much as a steel girder. The team winched the heavy ones onto a flatbed truck. On the last night, they worked by moonlight. Then the bones had to be shipped back to the US. Once there, the bones and fossils could be examined in the university's laboratories. Josh and his team had dug up a giant, but they would need to do a great deal of research before they knew exactly what kind of giant they had found winching a large bone onto the truck. Look at them, look at them do it, guys. Imagine being there when you, when they lifted the thousand pound bone onto the car and the car's shocks went <laughs> when a car like sinks, you know? Doesn't literally sink, but like goes down a little bit because it's carrying so much weight. All right, just a couple, just a couple more pages. We're almost done. This pa page will be done on page 47, okay? And we're on page 38, nine more pages. In the laboratory, Chewy and his team of paleo detectives had delicate work to do. They used a cast saw to cut the plaster jackets off the bones. Then, the painstaking task of removing the fossils from the rock began. 
Chewy began with the humerus and some vertebrae backbones and worked with an air scribe, a jackhammer about the size of a pen that taps off tiny pieces of rock. Imagine that, a jackhammer that you can hold in your fingers, in your hand. As he got closer to the surface of each fossil, he used dental picks and paintbrushes to brush away dust. As soon as the fossil was exposed, he painted it with a liquid plastic to prevent it from breaking. This is called, uh, what's that tool called? Did anybody remember? Air scribe. Okay. Everybody say air scribe. Paleo detectives carefully removed the fossil from the rock. Okay, you see that? It almost took a year to process the fossils. In the end, there were enough bones to build about a quarter of the dinosaur, but not enough for a complete skeleton. However, by comparing the bones with similar dinosaurs, the team could figure out what their creature would have been like. The dinosaur was about 10 times heavier than an elephant. Building work. Lab workers cast molds from the bones of a dinosaur skeleton to make lightweight replicas for displays in the museum. Only one bone, as long as Chewie's forearm, didn't seem to fit anywhere. Until Chewie realized it was a huge toe. This color indicates the bones that were found. So out of all the, these bones, these were all the only bones that were found. So they don't find all of them. They only find some of them, and then they connect the pieces with, with uh, their minds, okay? There were enough bones to imagine what the dinosaur skeleton would have looked like. The monster toe that confused Chewy. Although there were not enough bones to reconstruct their dinosaur, the team knew enough about seropods to make good guesses about its appearance. They could see where the muscles were once attached to the bones. This helped the flesh of the dinosaur. They imagined the creature would have moved through the swamp with lumbering gait like an elephant, with the lumbering gait of an elephant. No one knows what color the dinosaurs were, so Josh would choose whatever color he liked. Let's make ours green, he said. Josh and the team geologist, Ken Lacavera, wanted to find out more about the environment in which the seashore giant lived. So say they traveled to the biggest swamp in the United States, the Everglades in Florida. The region is peppered with many thousands of tiny islands. Tides from the Gulf of Mexico lap over the mud, traveling through the swamp. Alligators, manatee fish, and turtles swam beneath the water. But Josh and Ken were more interested in tree roots and deposits of mud and sand these matched what they had found in the desert. Now they felt sure that their dinosaur had lived in a tropical swamp. Alligators between the tree roots. You see the alligator? Yeah. All right. All right, two more pages. That's it. A year and a half after their dig in the desert, Josh announced their, the team's discovery to the press. Their seropod was huge. It was about 80 feet long and weighed up to 50 tons. It would fill a tennis court easily. It was one of the biggest dinosaurs ever found. More importantly, its bones were slightly different from anything that had been found before. They had discovered a new species of dinosaur. If you find a new dinosaur, you get to name it. The team chose Paralitidon, Stromeri. Paralitidon is Greek for tidal giant, which suits a creature that lived in, tidal, in a tidal swamp. Stromeri is a tribute to Stromer, the paleontologist who started Josh and his friends on the path to their adventures. Heavyweight champion, the heaviest dinosaur in America is a plant eater from South America. Argentiniosaurus is believed to have weighed in at 100 tons. This was just the vertebrae of the back of an Argentiniosaurus. Okay, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of this book, The Big 
dinosaur dig. Great job, everybody, and I can't wait to read all of your narratives when we get after we're done with this project. Okay? Read every single. Yeah. All right, guys. Like, subscribe, and hit that whatever.